بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم Welcome to the Voice of Islam, the Friday special podcast. Alhamdulillah, it's been a while we're on the hiatus. Ya Sheikh Hatim. Assalamualaikum. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We've been away for quite some time and all of us have been busy. Alhamdulillah. And now we're back and it will continue inshallah. But as you know, uh, brothers and sisters, we are now in the month of uh, Zul Hijjah. And we will be, some of us have been chosen to, to do Hajj, Alhamdulillah. And inshallah, the topic today we will talk about is the, the Hajj. And of course, brothers and sisters, uh, it's been over eight months now, Yasha, with what, our, what happened to our brothers and sisters in Palestine. Yeah. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to ease their hardships and give them success. Amen. Amen. And inshallah, inshallah ta'ala, this will be things will become much easier for them soon, inshallah. And we continuously make dua. We'll continuously will remember them in our dua, in our every prayers that we do. Uh, and again, I ask Allah Azza wa Jal to ease their hardship, to ease their suffering, and give Amen. them success in this life and the hereafter. Amen. 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 Sheikh, uh, we, we had a chat recently and then um, we talk about Hajj. And um, Alhamdulillah, some of you in the Gulf countries can go to Hajj every year. Uh, Allah bless you in your, where you are. So for us here in New Zealand, it takes a long way, a long time to actually to travel to go for Hajj. Uh, Alhamdulillah, I remember last year you were you did Hajj as well, and uh, is is that correct? Or did you? Yes, you did. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, yeah. Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alamin. Wa salatu salam ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ferdos, for again having the show. We have been uh, busy and away for a very long time, and uh, it's about time that we come back to our weekly show. Yes. Alhamdulillah that uh, we are alive to witness uh, the season of Hajj again. And the Hajj uh, season is a festive season where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives a privilege to many Muslims around the world to go and perform uh, an important pillar of Islam, which is Al-Hajj. Hajj, yes. And I remember when I spoke to you, and told you that inshallah I will be leaving uh, in a few days time to go to Hajj. Uh, you said to me that uh, I envy you and I wish if I could, uh, you know, go to Hajj as well. And, uh, you know, uh, it is easy for me to, to make it. Now, the first thing that I want to comment on is the idea of blessings. When does a Muslim recognize that something that he has is a blessing? Um, and what happens when you recognize that it's a blessing? And what happens when you don't know that it's a blessing and then suddenly you find yourself losing this blessing? So um, a human being is designed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to get into a routine or a norm that when he sees something every single day or every single month uh, or on a, on a continuous basis, he becomes accustomed to yes. that thing. And then the interest in that thing, he uh, reduces in his sight and he doesn't get excited because it's always there. Now, for us in the Middle East, uh, since the day we were born and we were raised as well, knowing that the Kaaba is next to us, it's next door, we grew up seeing our relatives just suddenly deciding to switch on the car and drive to Saudi Arabia to go for Hajj. Mm. It is like um, almost 22 hours drive and now it's even shorter with the new road. So... Uh, I have friends, I have relatives, I have neighbors who just text me in the morning and say, you know what, I'm going for Umrah today. They, they book a plane ticket and they, and they go. Now, these are the people who feel and know for sure the significance of that place, Mecca and Medina. But you have also a group of people who have never been to Mecca or Medina, and, and, and this is a fact that we have people in the Middle East 
that have never step, you know, set a foot on Mecca and Al Medina their entire lives. And 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 the uh, the the strange part is you have people living in Mecca who have never entered Al Haram as well. So you sit and wonder the scenarios of why these people never visited the holiest land to the Muslims. So you come to a conclusion that either someone is ignorant and he does he doesn't he or she does not know the value of this place or this this person knows the value of this place but he feels that he is not ready to go there because of the sins that he's committing so he needs to be pure and the problem is none of us will be 100% pure yeah, we're true. all full of thought uh, faults and mistakes yes. so that day that day will never come and then you have another group of people who feel that Allah has to call me to that place it's a calling yeah so they are living in this harry potter fantasy that Allah <laughs> subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to dedicate an angel to come to them and call them to the city of Mecca or even to perform hajj or umrah this will never happen because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded Sayyidina Ibrahim to call people for hajj and the call is done if you did not hear the call until today then there's a problem with your hearing go and check the ENT but if you are still waiting the day of judgment will come and you have not been called yet to uh, Mecca and Medina and then you have the people who got used to it that you know what it will always be there you know yes. yeah. in the future when I'm ready when I decide to go it will always be there so let me tell you um, about the idea it will always be there I have been going for Hajj and Umrah for the past 20 years Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. and previously whenever I decide to go to Hajj pack my bags and leave there is no formalities nothing and then suddenly that is no longer the case now there is a system in the Middle East you can only go every five years and every five years you have to apply electronically and then when you apply electronically there is a criteria because every country has a quarter uh -huh. now Oman used to be 36,000 pilgrimage per year in right. the season of Hajj yeah now the allowed number of people to go for Hajj from Oman is 14,000 only wow. so you can see the huge shrink mm. from 36,000 to 14,000 30, 30 drop to about 30 percent 40 percent yeah yeah and now when you apply in the system first you have the system of first come first serve mm. And then you have the criteria. The, the criteria is the older people have be a better chance to go more than the younger people. So they give you know advantage to the older people. And then the women who are going with their mahram for the first time, they are given privilege. The people who with disability and chronic disease are given privilege. The people who have never gone uh, in their entire life, they are given privilege. The people who are reverts, they're given privilege. And then comes you. So you might apply for Hajj and maybe wait for three years, four years, and your turn will not come. So the idea that we had a blessing and we could go anytime is no longer there. Now you have to follow system mm -hmm. and you have to apply you might get a seat, you might not get a seat. Mm. And then when I went for Hajj the first time, I paid 600 riyals for the entire journey, everything. Mm. 600 riyals, I don't know how much is in, uh, in, New, in New Zealand dollars, uh, but uh, it is equivalent to... Omani riyals? Omani riyals, yes. You, you, you can do the conversion rate. 
So we'll be about 2,500 New Zealand dollars. Okay. So today, if I, I'm going now to, to Hajj, mm -hmm. yes. the cost the cost of me going to Hajj is 3,000 riyal. Oh, so 3,000 riyal. 12,000 so, New Zealand. So you can see the huge difference. Previously, we had the privilege to go anytime and it was cheap. And it's accessible to everybody. Now, it's expensive and you don't get to choose when you want to go because there's a system. And this number will shrink and shrink and shrink and shrink. So the people who are procrastinating and feeling that, you know what, inshallah, I'll do it after I get married. Inshallah, I'll do it after I build my house. Inshallah, I'll do it after I get my promotion. Inshallah, I'll do it when I'm a little bit matured, when I'm 40. Inshallah, I'll do it when I stop all of the sins in my life. My friend, that day might not come. You have two problems. You have the problem of inflation and the, the shrinking of the number of people going. And you have another bigger problem, which is the angel of death. Yeah. If Allah sends the angel of death to you and takes your life away, game over. Khalas, it's finished. You did not perform Hajj. Hmm. You had the chance, you had the means, you had the physical capabilities, and you didn't do it. Yeah. Now, Dr. Ferdos, I think you've seen on TV people who are very old with wheelchair and they can hardly walk. Do you think performing Hajj in that state is easier than performing Hajj when you're young and healthy and vibrant, you can walk, you know? Why do some people wait until they reach to an age where they, can, they have to be carried? Hmm. to perform Hajj. I understand for the people who could not afford, the people who have restrictions from their countries, the countries like Indonesia, you have almost 280 million Muslims. They yes. have to wait for 10 years or 20 years to go to Hajj. They, they might go Hajj while they're old. I understand those categories. Hmm. But I don't understand the people who could have gone to Hajj while they're younger, but they, they, they enjoyed, they went to Thailand, they went to Morocco, they went to everywhere except Hajj. So are you, are you saying that how many, how many Muslims are in Oman at the moment? How many Muslims? Po population? Populations wise, yeah. Five million. Five, Five million, million is the entire population. Two and a half million are um, citizen, citizens and two yeah. and a half million are expats. Out of the expats, of course, you have non-Muslims. Correct, of course, yeah. Yeah. So 14,000, so despite all the rules, you're still able to go to Hajj every year. So that means there's not many people from Oman uh, are applying. My, our category is different. Right. We, are, we, are, uh, we have a special number of people who go for service. We, right. are, not, we are not like Hajjaj, like others. So we get permits to go there and organize and help and support logistics and things like that. So we are part of the convoys that go to serve the Hujjaj. And that's a privilege from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well, that it, 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 gives, it allows us to go every year. But if, it, if we were not doing that part, then we are like everybody else. We're not allowed to go every year. Right, right. Yeah. So, so Alhamdulillah, you've been selected. You have a connections, Sheikh. You got the ability to go every year. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, I'm happy for you. you, <laughs> and I, you ask Allah, I ask Allah to continuously give that. And inshallah, you know, when next time when I want to go Hajj through Oman, I mean, I'll, I'll let you know, you have to give me a special permission too. We're going to drive all the way to uh, Makkah, inshallah. <laughs> you know, you know, what is funny is sometimes you come across friends and they and they say in a very sarcastic way, why, why do you go to Hajj every year? Yeah, go and see other places in the world. Why? You don't have anywhere else except Mecca? They don't understand the privilege. You know, the in the beginning, we, we, yeah, 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 they don't the understand. The connection. And again, Sheikh, I mean, you mentioned about waiting for Allah to give you an invitation. I mean, in a way that Allah didn't put that interest in their heart to be there, right? And uh, for some of us, you know, this is something that we want to do. We want to be there. We want to, we want to feel... Uh, experience we want to feel like yeah. you know 
Subhanallah, when you go to Mecca, you go to Medina, you look through, you, 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 you're you just reflecting on uh, this, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the companions, the they were all used to be in that same spot. They were walking, you were trying to imagine how how, how interesting it is, you know, how how good it was. And, you know, like when we understand the history, you know, just think about the Mecca where we are now, or what, how the way Mecca is now, and how the way the Mecca before the time of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Where they used to be, so. they be the idols there, right? And then you know, so if you if you if you know the history, of course you have that interest, you have that connections. And when you when you in Mecca, you stand there, you you think about it, and you were like, wow, you know, how things have changed. You know, this is Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam used to be here. He's the one that built this. You know, he was there. Yeah. When you reflect on that, you have that excitement. This is this is the thing. This is the uh, it's, it's it's you know that you have. You have the love. You have the love of the our history. You have the love of uh, being a Muslim. You love the, everything about Islam, basically. Um, you know, Doctor Doctor Ferdows, uh, the people of Oman were idol worshippers, and we are Muslims today because of the message of Islam that came from Mecca. How, you know, how ungrateful would we be if we don't? feel this the sacred the sacredness of mecca mm. you know the light of islam started in mecca yes and we became muslim because of that of course of course not just oman everywhere malaysia everywhere yeah everywhere 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 you know that's why the message was sent because the human being forgot and uh, yeah subhanallah you know now look, uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I can't talk uh, continuously talking about Mecca and Hajj, Sheikh. I'm gonna be very jealous, you know. <laughs> <It's a good laughs> day, Alhamdulillah. I wish it was that easy from uh, for us in New Zealand I, just to pack our bag and be there. <laughs> I, I have a very big bag; it can fit you. <laughs> <laughs> next so. time, inshallah. Maybe next year I'll come to Oman. You put me inshallah. in the back of your car and you drive me drive me through the custom. <laughs> One of the other reasons. Uh, I need to explain this, uh, Dr. Ferdos. Yes. I have two reasons why also I go uh, to Hajj every year. The first reason is the day of Arafah. Mm -hmm. You know, if people know the day, of, the value of the day of Arafah, standing on Mount Arafah and asking Allah how Allah grants all your prayers, you will, you will. You will go even if it's not Dhul Hijjah. You will go to stand on Mount Arafah. Because we get the privilege to be on a day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has praised and the Prophet sallallahu has praised. He said, al Hajju Arafah. Hajj is Arafah. If you don't stand in Arafah, then you don't have a Hajj. And for the past 20 years, every year I go to the Mount of Arafah and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah makes our lives easier and he grants us, you know, what is khair for us, what is good for us. So if you have this privilege, you know, for Allah to accept your prayers, wouldn't you want to have this privilege? Mm. The second thing, the second reason why I go there every year is humility. You know, we as humans... Sometimes uh, the devil, you know, helps you nurture the ego inside you. So you're successful, you have a business or you have an education or you have a career or you're a well-known figure in society. Something in your head tells you that you are important. Hmm. Now, when you go to Hajj, yep. you become equal look like everybody else. Once you wear the ihram, Yes. Nobody, nobody really cares who you are and nobody who knows who you are. Nobody wants to know what achievements you have in life. I was just telling my friend yesterday, one of the years I went for Hajj, we were in a bus and next to us was a pickup. And there were like five or six people, you know, at the back sitting in that uh, pickup. Yeah. One of the people sitting at the back was President Ahmed Najad of Iran. Can you imagine the president of a country sitting at the back of a pickup, you know, wearing his ihram? And nobody was even staring. Nobody was even looking 
because on that occasion, there's no kings or queens or, uh, or, or businessmen or CEOs, no. In front of Allah, he doesn't want to know all of that. Your titles, your titles are for you at home. Yes. When you come in front of Allah, throw your titles out of the window. So it teaches you humility. And we as human beings, we need from time to time to remind ourselves that we are servants of Allah and we are a property of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah owns us. So this journey helps you to, you know, to understand this concept. Humble yourself, yeah. Humble yourself in front of your Lord, in front of your Creator. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. It's a good. good reminder, Sheikh. Alhamdulillah. And um, I'm sure there'll be a lot of Muslims, including you, will be in a day of Arafah. We'll be asking Allah to ease um, what our brothers and sisters in Palestine. I mean, obviously, for us as well, we will do the same. We make dua. But we hope the more the dua that we make, you know, Allah will hasten the, the success and the victory to our brothers and sisters in Palestine. Um, there'll be none of them that are going to be in Hajj this year. Um, yeah. you, you know, uh, when you mentioned uh, dua, mm. uh, you notice that uh, after eight months of suffering, and this genocide that uh, some of us as Muslims we got tired to raise our hands to pray for our brothers and I just want to take this opportunity to remind everybody that those who were inflicted by this the genocide the people of Gaza they are still solid they're still resilient they're That's still right. fighting so how can we be tired if we are sitting in our comfortable homes, you're only asked to raise your hands to the sky in every prayer and pray for your brothers and sisters. And you feel like, khalas, it's been eight months, we're tired, we need to go back to our lives. You know, I, I just feel that if I was in the place or in the shoe of the people of Gaza and I knew that the least that my brothers and sisters in the world would do for me is pray for me and they're not, I would really be upset. Mm. Yeah, I would really be upset. And, uh, you know, it's very easy to claim that we are believers. Very easy. Anybody who takes a Shahada now, he he's labeled as a believer. And people who are born Muslims, they're labeled as believers. But belief or iman or faith is truly demonstrated in your actions so. not in your identity or title you know mm. allah doesn't want to know if you're a muslim or not he wants to know whether your belief system is translated in your actions or not so I hope will... we all pass yeah. the test Yes, Allah will knows what's in your heart, right, Sheikh? I mean, uh, yeah, the indeed. action, the actions is the shows that you truly believe. Like the same in the word taqwa, for example. You know, we say we have yeah our word of taqwa. But how do you translate it in your daily day to day, day actions? How do you translate that into your understandings about what's happening around the world? And you mentioned, you know, you know, of, of course, the issue of Palestine and Gaza. I mean, this is not a new issue. It's not eight month old issue. This has been many many years. Throughout the entire years, as, as far as I can remember, the, the day that I was born, you know, this issue has been ongoing ever since. And uh, subhanAllah, Sheikh, um, the success will come, suffering will end at some point, uh, because this is the promise of Allah, it will happen. Yes. And we do know that the uh, at the time of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the companions were struggling. They were struggling, they were being punished in, in the same way. And, you know, and then the companions will also go to ask the prophet, you know, when we are going to get the victory? Yes. And they don't go and ask this after a little bit of punishment, after a little bit of this. They've gone through hardships. We know the story of Bilal, for example, how he's being punished. And I remember the, some of the companions, they were branded by hot iron onto their, onto their bodies, we're leaving their marks and scars. And, and, and you know what? This is exactly what we're seeing now. Yeah. And, uh, the other day, I had uh, someone forward me, forwarded me a video actually, and uh, I was very sad. And um, you know that the 
this young girl, um, I believe because it was a fire that was caught in and, and, and the way how the fires burn her hands. So her hands are all fused together. So you don't see her fingers anymore. Right. So the fingers is, is gone. There's no fingers because of the fire and everything is fused. It heals like that. So her hands is basically like that. And and she got scars on her on her on her scalp and on her legs and and burn on the face so she can't even you know you can see that the, the scarring from the face you know if you smile or talking you're crying you don't actually see the facial expression because of this so and you look of... at that you look at that you know like you say Shah, i mean you know you in mean, oman obviously you have everything you know life is great there, alhamdulillah in new zealand the same way and you know how can at the same time this year you know 2024 1445 1445 hijra where some of us have a really really good life where we can turn up to a, a shop and buy a food to eat buy water to drink we open our tap water the water's flowing if we're really thirsty we can just drink from the tap water and there are people whom that could have been helped where the entire worlds are somewhat against them you know the entire world's against them, and and you know, yeah. I mean, I just, I just, yeah. I just don't want to say so, those words, yeah, Sheikh. I mean, it's, it's, it's. Well, it's well, ba basically, this uh, this uh, war has exposed a lot hypocrites. of hypocrites. Hypocrites. Yeah. And I, I, I want to assure you that the day of the victory, the day of the victory of the people of Palestine. The first people who will celebrate are the hypocrites. You know, they will start celebrating. Oh, Alhamdulillah, we defeated the enemy, and they will celebrate. And while they, throughout the eight months, they didn't do anything. Yeah. They never spoke a single word in support of the the Palestinians. They did not pay a single dollar to to aid their brothers and sisters. They did not boycott. A single coffee or burger or a donut or whatever to aid their brothers but when it comes to celebrating the victory they will be the first people but the good thing is Allah has exposed everybody yes yeah because eight months is a long time yeah. for you to be resilient you're either on board yes. or you left the train long time ago Allah, yeah, I just want to add, Shay, Allah has exposed those people, but at the same time, Allah also has bring many people back to Islam. Alhamdulillah. And, uh, alhamdulillah. And, and you know, we, we know on a regular basis, uh, Shaykh, in New Zealand, we are hearing people uh, accepting Islam because they were looking into the religion uh, after what happened in Palestine. Not just New Zealand, which is all, all over in the West, all over, like, the world, yeah. all over the world. In America, the same thing as well. So subhanAllah, Allah exposed some people. Allah, Allah shows this is going to be the proof of them on the Day of Judgment. And Allah has also bring those Muslims, people who are born Muslim, to also come back to Islam. People who are not, who were born as a Muslim, they forget and they will now come back to Islam because of this. Uh, it's a I, difficult I, time, yeah. I, I want to say something about Hajj uh, in relation to this. Alhamdulillah, this, uh, this war brought the believers together and made them one again as one ummah so the people who are going for hajj should also take advantage of this occasion of hajj to build solidarity between the ummah the members of the ummah so don't go there with an agenda that i am omani and he is indian I am black and he is white. I am from this tribe and that tribe. I am from this country and he is from that country. We are better than them. You know, we are educated there, not educated, and so on. Forget about these differences. And these differences are the main cause of what our ummah is going through today. We are weak because of the differences. And you, you know, we before the uh, before the show, we were talking about the annual dispute about, of Muslims 
about sighting the moon. Everybody is uh, <laughs> is is fighting about about the moon. So, you know, I I think the ummah is matured now to come and sit on one table and make a decision that is unified throughout the ummah that everybody is happy with that uh, decision because it is no longer healthy for the ummah to continue like this yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. we have united our fronts in support of palestine so let us continue we have the day these eight months have proven to us that we can work together if now we can go to the streets and protest with uh, the atheists the non-muslims even the lgbtq are protesting side by side with the muslims you know against the zionists so we have gotten along with everybody else you know the only remaining people we still need to get along with are the muslims so let us put that effort and uh, you know unite the ummah again okay sure um alhamdulillah is there anything else that you wanted to add i do you know i don't know if you take pictures while you're in hajj but if you do take some videos and pictures or some reminders for us send it to me Isha, and then we can uh, share on our on our facebook and our youtube as well inshallah yeah i will do that i actually when i go to hajj i uh, i do uh, instagram uh, reels and uh, i intentionally do that because i want to encourage young people uh, to, to to take this journey that uh, you know when we go for holidays we take pictures of everything yes which are which is nonsense most of the time so when we go to the holy places we want you to see live what it is like to be between Allah, the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his blessings and to see your brothers and sisters from around the world every single color shape size hmm. and all of them are unified there only to ask for the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so inshallah I will share pictures I will share videos and uh, you can post them on uh, Voice of Islam and we we'll hope to see you all uh, when I come back inshallah inshallah and I just wanted to remind you before we end our um, podcast today that you've agreed that next year inshallah you're going to take me uh, on the hajj in your boot and I don't need to worry about my my visa or anything. My, my my mic my mic is not working I can I can't hear you I can't hear you <laughs> that's your promise I'll be I'll be there in Zulqaida next year inshallah and then you're going to take me straight to Hajj uh getting give me the special visa category inshallah inshallah <laughs> inshallah 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 okay Sheikh, um uh, we we'll look forward to see you when you're back inshallah please remember inshallah. us in, in your in your dua please remember us uh, all of us here in new zealand um, um please uh, remember us in your dua and i also look forward to see you again inshallah um, either in oman or we meet in malaysia or you come and visit us again in, in new zealand or the fiji islands inshallah so we'll see inshallah we'll see inshallah inshallah inshallah, inshallah. take care okay. of yourselves Okay, Asha, Jazakallah khairan. And anything last from you, Asha, before we go? One final message in this podcast? In fact, the one final message is Allah will aid his servants with victory. And we hope that we will be alive to see the day that Palestine will be free again. Bi-idhnillahi ta'ala. Ameen. Okay, everyone, Jazakallah khairan. If you found this podcast uh, beneficial, inshallah, please do share and forward. And we look forward to see you again uh, after Eid uh, uh, al-Adha, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.